we're having how long is this? Uh, 15 minutes. Hi everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today I have requested our friend Mufti Faisal Japanwala. I have also requested Mufti Tariq Jamil. I have also requested Sirajul Haq. I have also requested <laughs> Mulana Fazlur Rahman. I have also requested Mufti uh, Afnan. I have also requested Mufti um, Azam, Mufti Rafi, Mufti Taki Usmani. I have also requested uh, uh, Mufti uh, Naeem all of these people to come and meet my friend uh, Dr. Suljander here. And the reason I have uh, been wanting to uh, get him to talk to these people is because he is working towards what's called finding common grounds and his organization is called Bridges to Common Ground. And uh, in order for somebody to reach to a common ground, you need two parties. Uh, to find commonalities. So he has studied Islam for 18 years, the Quran for 18 years, and he has a lot of interesting questions, a lot of point of views, and he has talked with hundreds and hundreds of uh, scholars around the globe of Islam discussing about Islam. So today we have the privilege to join uh, Faisal Japanwala, who is also a mufti from uh, Karachi, and he has uh, he runs an organization for time management. He also runs a time mm -hmm. management consultancy business. That's how mm -hmm. he makes his living. And he also um, is a venture funder. So he actually takes money and invests in different businesses for different people. Um, but in the meantime, oh, as alaikum Shahzad Salim Bhai. Uh, if we can get uh, Dr. Ghamidi also to talk with so Mr. Mark Sujin, that will be great. And also you, Shahzad, if you can talk with him. So Shahzad is a uh, also another religious scholar, self-learned religious scholar like you. Mm. Um, and um, he's wonderful in terms of, um, of knowing about the religion. And uh, he, is, he works uh, in an organization called... Um, I'm forgetting the name, but his that organization was founded by another gentleman who is a mufti or, or a self-learned scholar, and his name is Dr. Ghamidi. And Dr. Ghamidi is uh, now living in Malaysia. People in Pakistan threatened him. I think I heard of him. <clears throat> and he moved to Malaysia, and he yeah. was in a tour in the U.S. last month. Uh, that's why I heard of him, yes. Yeah, he was in a tour. He went to many, many, many places. I've, you know, I'm sorry to miss him. It's okay. Uh, next time, there's always a... But we can arrange a similar call. Um, um, the, the Mufti you're going to talk to right now has written a book on him. Excellent. Uh, so he is also in good contact with him. Uh, so um, still we wait on uh, Mufti Faisal Japanwala. Do you want to share uh, your views about something, if you'd like to share? Well, well what, why don't you ask a question that you think your viewers would be interested in. Okay. Um, so, so far, if, if, if somebody wanted to, if a Christian person met you and asked you, Mark, explain to me, uh, you're, you're, an, you're a former congressman and you go to Congress and somebody asks you, Mark, you have been understanding Islam for 18 years. Explain to me in three minutes, what did you understand so far? Is it a mockery? Is it a bad religion? You know, <laughs> is, what's, is it a word of devil? You know, what, what did you find? Well, I have Can to... Can I put it on silent? Yes. Uh, I have to tell you that most Christians in America uh, would view Islam in an, unfortunately, not in a favorable light. That's because much of us live in ignorance. I didn't like Islam very much myself when I was a member of the U.S. Congress. Someone challenged me, a close friend, said, have you ever read the Quran? I said, well, no. He said, well, how do you know it's not a good book or it's a bad book? I said, well, I'm going to read it and find out. So I bought a copy of an English translation of the Quran. In the meantime, I'm starting reading it, and a friend of mine called me, a different friend from India. He said, Mark, did you know that Jesus is in the Quran? I said, why would you call me now to ask me or tell me this point? He said, I felt led by the Spirit of God, the Ruhallah. 
to call you. I said, well, funny you should mention it because I'm reading the Quran now. I can hold it there. Thank you. So, anyway. So, I'm reading the Quran now. And I don't believe Jesus is in the Quran. He said, well, keep reading and let me know what you find. So I started reading. I was absolutely shocked how many similar verses there are in the Quran to the Bible. When one lives in ignorance, as I did for so many years, I still am ignorant, but slowly climbing out of the pit of ignorance and reading this holy book. So here's what I tell Christians. I tell them the story. And they say, really? Jesus is in the Quran? I said, Jesus is in the Quran directly or mentioned indirectly at least 110 times. Oh, every Christian said, I don't believe that. This is how we talk about it. It's most effective because it's a shock value to people. And in order to get us to think differently about something we think we know, but to think differently, we need to be shocked a little bit. Then our brain opens up. When someone told me Jesus was in the Quran, I was shocked and said, I'm going to read it. And, and not only is Jesus there with the prophet Muhammad, but also he's there with Daniel, Moses, Noah, Ezekiel, even John the Baptist, a whole book on Mariam, Mary, the mother of Jesus. I mean, this is amazing. So I felt that we needed to share this news with other people. So I've been traveling around the United States and all over the world, uh, sh sharing, lecturing, however you would like to put it, my journey. I'm not a scholar. You said I'm a scholar. I'm not a scholar. I have no degrees in this matter. I was a congressman, ambassador, a politician, a diplomat. But I love faith, love God, and looking to find common ground. Rather than what we differ, if I looked at everything about my wife, Nancy, that I don't like or that bothers me or that's different, we'd be divorced. And she could say the same about me. I look at our four beautiful children. Do you think they're perfect? Do they know everything? Of course not. So if I picked on them constantly, well, you did this wrong and you did that wrong. You don't believe your, your moral values are wrong. We, we would be estranged. We would be enemies with our own children. So with Muslims, why would I do thing, anything any different? Why do I want to find the things that we don't agree with? Because there are so many that we do and build a relationship on the common ground first. Then we can talk about the more pressing issues. Cool. Our Mufti seems to have disappeared or not able to find us here. I don't know why, what happened. Maybe his internet has some issue. So till that happens, um, define Islam now for me in three minutes. <laughs> Islam to me is, is very simple. It's they who are submitted or surrendered to God. Well, Muslim, Muslim means one who is submitted to God. Jesus, in his heart language of Aramaic, which is similar to Arabic, said we must be Mushalim. Do you hear that? Mushalim, that's Aramaic. Muslim is Arabic meaning we should all be submitted to God. So Jesus said we should be submitted. The Quran says we be, should be submitted. Christians sing a song. Almost every church in the United States and in Europe, I surrender all to God. It's a very famous song that every Christian in the world probably knows. I Can surrender all. Can you sing it? I cannot sing, but it, the verse goes, I surrender all. I surrender all to him. I surrender all. And so it's a, it's a beautiful hymn. And when I hear that song, I laugh and think, well, Muslims could sing this <laughs> without any problem whatsoever. Uh, it'd be different type of music. But see, this is the frustration. We, we are so uh, within our own little clubs 
that it's hard to break out of our t religious tribe or religious clubs to even see what other clubs are doing or study what other clubs are thinking. So I don't believe in clubs. I just believe in one God. Jesus said, listen to his disciples. There's only one God and you must Rahman, love him with Rahman and how these are Aramaic words that mean compassion, mercy, and kindle love. And you must love your neighbor. He said, that's it. Everything surrounds these, this one commandment with two parts. Love God, Rahman, love your neighbor, how? These are Aramaic words that are similar to Arabic that mean love in different ways. One, Rahman, tenderness and mercy. And this word, Rahman, we could have a whole session just on it. Muslims, as you know, those that are Muslims listening, know five times a day you pray that. Bismillah and Rahman Rahim. Every chapter in the Quran but one starts out. Bismillah and Rahman Rahim. And the one that doesn't has it four times within the text. So this is prevalent in the Quran, in prayer, in Islam. And that's exactly the word Jesus used, uses over and over again. And did you know? The root of Rahman, Rahma, Resh, Hey, Mem, these three letters mean the womb, tenderness. And my grandson was born just a few weeks ago. I saw that little baby just born. That's Rahman. That's how Allah, God, feels toward us. That tender mercy like a young child, as we feel with the newborn baby. So it brought the word Rahman to a new, fresh meaning to look at our, my, our little, beautiful grandson. Wonderful. Um, well, I guess our Mufti is not able to make it. So thank you, everybody, for watching. If you know any religious scholars out there, um, Please ask them to connect with uh, Dr. Suljinder here. His name is tagged on this video uh, so that they can see his point of view. And he's, he was saying, we need to be shocked. And I wish and I pray. And uh, I try to shock everybody. You asked me, why do you want to do this on your page with all the Muslims? And my answer was to basically shock them. And you know, Shock creates confusion and confusion leads into new kind of understanding. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm asking. You know, people don't have the courage to walk into a church or a temple or a mandir or a synagogue or a mosque. But they can just open up their Facebook and, you know, start watching these people. And my wish and prayer is that, prayer is that every mosque would start broadcasting their sermons in Facebook Live as soon as possible. Put it on YouTube so that the misunderstanding is reduced because you know you can't just pick up a word and you know just go on with it well please call me mark mark no doctor needed and, no doctor and well, oh, i thought you were going to cure my cough or something <laughs> well, i'm not that kind of doctor so <clears throat> let's get together and have a cup of tea a shy more often and just just share together i'd like to hear from your friends and what they think <clears throat> and how they think we can best serve them and getting closer to God. This is my ambition is not to convert you to anything except closeness to the creator and the prophets who are emblematic or symbolize what the create in a practical earthly sense, what the creator wants for us. They, they represent many of those beautiful attributes of, of God. So thank you, Rayhan, for your time. I'm sorry that, Maybe we're a little too con controversial, but... Uh, no, why is it controversial? Well, the muft where are the mufti? What's the word? Oh, he didn't show up because of that. He's afraid of controversy. controversy. Yeah. Some technical issue, I'm sure. Well... He's already controversial. Tell him to check out our website to mm -hmm. learn more. We'll, we'll talk to him again. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Mark. Have fun.